Third party cookies as a name always confused me, guys, for the longest time because I, I just don't see it in the software. You don't see it in the browsers yelling at you. It says, oh, this is a third party cookie. You don't see it. It's just something you have to understand it, which is which is something I, I, I get confused about. If something is not in the software and we talk about it, it's like, what is this thing? Right? So in this video, I want to talk about what are third party cookies. And technically, we mention them. We give them an honorable mention in the same side videos. Check this video out if you want to learn more about it. But third party cookies are very, very interesting. And how about we discuss that? within the context of the browser. So in this video, I want to kind of go through what happened when you actually go to a website and uh, you have some cookies with that website. And what happened if there is another uh, request that goes to another website and just run through that stuff and what are the cookies in this case? Let's just jump into it. Guys, if you're new here, my name is Hussein, and I discuss backend engineering in this channel and other software engineering like this one uh, topics that uh, particularly interest me. If you, if you like this stuff, subscribe, give it a like, and uh, share with your friends, and let's just jump into it. So third-party cookies, the definition of the third-party cookies is cookies that are set on your browser from other domain than the one you are currently visiting. That's very interesting, right? Because if I go to HusseinNasser.com, right? Let's, let's go through this example. Let's assume my website, HusseinNasser.com, my blog. I type in, in the browser, HusseinNasser.com, and I hit enter. What that will do, it's gonna do the TLS, it's going to get the domain, obviously, then do the TLS, and then I'm going to send the get request. If I have visited that HusseinNasser.com prior, and there are some cookies associated with HusseinNasser.com, they will be taken from my browser and sent along my get request in the headers section. If there are, if this is the first time, nothing will be sent because there are no cookies. So I assume this is the first time. I go and visit the page. The request reached the server and maybe travels through some reverse proxies in the process. Reach the server. The server then processes this request and responds back with, let's say, an HTML page. And in the process of responding, the HTML page will become in the body, obviously, that's the content. However, in the header section, there is a possibility where this website needs a cookie. So the server decides that most of the time. And that's where the sit cookie header is get set with that HTML page that we are going to say, hey, by the way, here's your content. Here's your index.html page. And I want you to set a cookie for that particular site. You, yes. And let's say the cookie is, I don't know, some random number, wherever. A equal one. So now the set header will have this value, A equal one. And the browser will receive that response and it says, okay, here's the content, HTML, let me render that. And oh, where's the header, set header. So let me add a cookie for HusseinNasser.com named A with a value of one. Awesome. Now the browser will start processing the HTML page and say, oh, you want to go to HusseinNasser.com slash image.png. Sure, that's a good request. Let me turn around and make another good request to HusseinNasser.com slash PNG. And I'm about to send that good request. And guess what? Wait a second, we're going to HusseinNasser.com. I am in HusseinNasser.com. I am visiting that site. Hey, do I have cookies for HusseinNasser.com? Guess what? We do this time. It's A.1, A equal 1. Let me send that cookie in the Git headers and send it to the server. Beautiful, beautiful. 
the server will respond, get that cookie, and there's some stuff with that. Now it's, the server now knows, hey, the same client just sent me the same cookie. So this is a way of tracking as well, right? Not just tracking authentication, a lot of things. Cookies using it for a lot of stuff. So that's the idea of a cookie. Let's continue parsing because that's not the only URL. A parse, and here's a beautiful image. But guess what? This image is on yahoo.com i don't know who uses yahoo anymore but yahoo.com slash image.png let's change the name um uh, image1.png wow i just changed the name okay yeah so now there's an image that we want to pull from another website another one did you call it and i am not currently in the same domain currently this is a completely different domain first of all can i make this request is the course policy cross origin resource sharing allows me to make a request to this to this request to this uh, domain if your content security policy allows it which we talked about right here content security policy right do am i allowed to pitch a fetch an image from anywhere other than myself am i allowed to execute a script or pull a script from a site that is not me or this or or, or this website is there who.com something is in the content policy or not so let's ask all these questions so let's say we don't have any content security policy it's all just like yeah there's no security whatsoever all right so then now oh, I can make that get request to yahoo.com slash image. Guess what? Do I have cookies set for yahoo.com? That cookie, if exists, in this case it doesn't, is called a third party cookie. Seven minutes to talk about third party cookie, guys. Yeah. You can watch a one minute video or just watch this seven minute to learn what a third party cookie is. <laughs> I know I'm slow. I like to take my time when I explain these things. It's just the way I learn. You might disagree, but anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. I don't have any cookies, my friend. So let's set a get request to yahoo.com slash image one dot pinch. And then my server yahoo.com or receive that get request it says oh that's a delicious get request delicious i need to track this babe because this guy didn't send me any cookie we need to track him we need to set some cookie let's set a cookie called y equal one because y for yahoo and duh now we're gonna respond back with the image and and here's what the server the server might just say f you Right, I'm not gonna respond with the image 404 or or 403. You cannot forbidden. But here's the image. Here's the image. Take it. But sit cookie header. Here's another header. Sit cookie y equal one. Sit that dang cookie in your browser. So the browser now receives that request. Here's the image. Oh. Yahoo.com want me to set a cookie in my browser for Yahoo.com and it's called yoy.1 but wait a minute I am in HusseinNasr.com that's called a third party cookie because just it's just the same cookie it, it, it doesn't make any sense right if you if you go to Yahoo.com in a completely different tab Y equal one will be sent and that, in that case, it's going to call, be called first party cookie. But here, it has been cross-referenced, cross-site. It has been referenced by a, another site. Yet, it is called a third party cookie. Yeah, because why? I am in a not in the site. And those things are used absolutely either for tracking or for authentication or for showing the likes, for example, for Facebook.com. It's... They're being used everywhere. I need to know you're not Facebook.com. You're just HusseinNasr.com. I want to show, for example, whether someone liked this page or not. So 
you and a address plugin that points to facebook.com right and does the exact same thing it will send that request it will respond back with that cookie and the next time you load the page it will send the cookie to facebook.com or yahoo.com and it will now recognize you essentially that's how that's how it works so let's continue with our yahoo example so we received the y equal one value and now i set it but yahoo.com y equal one is a cookie that is in the browser it is there but it is set by a third by, by a cross requ request right it's not set by actually me visiting right and now i will refresh the page again let's say these are the only pages if i refresh again hosseinato.com immediately i'm gonna send a dot one a equal one because hey i know you now so you can change the behavior on the server side. Oh, now we got A equal one. I'm gonna change the behavior. You can change the complete website based on this stuff. You can start logging, you can start tracking, right? So hey, A with one, we just received that. This the same user just sent me the same cookie. We get respond back with the same content. Let's say that nothing changed. Parse, 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 parse. Let's say not on image, dot pinch. We send A dot one. We go to yahoo.com. We want to send a request to yahoo.com slash image1.png and we send that get request to yahoo.com. And guess what? We send with it y equal 1. Yup. Queen. And that's what you, uh, Google changed. Same site property. If that cookie said same site equal lax then the browser will not send the cookie y equal one to yahoo.com if it has the same site property equal lax then it's not gonna send it if it's strict definitely it's not gonna send it right because there's like a yeah it's a we, we talked about the difference, right? Is it, is it like visiting that's like, a, does it change the navigation or does it just make a cross request request? So it's not going to send. If the same side property in that cookie does not exist, then we're not going to send that cookie. Blah, 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 blah. Let's reply. Let's say it's the exact same thing. I'm clean, Jose also going. First time visiting it. But going to yahoo.com. I started parsing the page, yahoo.com, send that request, I don't have any cookie, yahoo.com will receive that, and the yahoo.com, if it starts replying back with the cookie, hey, send me that cookie, and make the same site, uh, let's say it doesn't exist, the same site attribute of the cookie, so if it receives back, here's what Google changed, Chrome and Firefox is following this now, now, if, if you refresh the page again, that cookie has been set, but guess what? Y equal one, but there's no same side attribute. So by default, if there's no same side attribute, it's gonna be treated as lax, and as a result, is not gonna be sent. So if we refresh the page, you go to yahoo.com, hey, I'm about to send a request to yahoo.com, but I am in hussein.com. I have a cookie for yahoo.com, should I send it? Nope. Why? Because it doesn't have a same side attribute. That means it has a, it essentially be treated as a lax. And lax means do not send that cookies if it's a cross request. That's, that's what it means. Just don't send it. It's going to be sent only if it's an actual URL and the user chooses to click on that damn URL, which chose, which causes a, a top-level navigation to go to yahoo.com. And in that case, going to yahoo.com slash png, image1.png will send the y equal one cookie. And as a result, you'll be recognized. I think it's a great change.
Same side equal. Out. However, what can Yahoo do to continue to track us? Very simple. All they have to do, yahoo.com, they go there. And when they want to set the cookie, they add a beautiful attribute called same site, none. And none is basically the original behavior where we essentially always send the cookie. Even if it's a cross-site reference, as we talked about. How did you guys like the animation, by the way? I know there are no animations and people give me a lot of beef because of this. I just don't know how to do animations, guys, right? All right, guys, so that was the same site. That was like the third-party cookies. And guess what? I just learned those goddamn things are going to die in 2022, but I don't know anything about that. They, Google is going to completely destroy this. Now there's a workaround. You can set the same site equal none. The ads, anything that basically makes a request that is not to your website... What's going to happen to that? That's going to be in a different video. In detail, to, to, talking about the death of third-party cookies. That's a third-party cookie. All right, guys. 60 minutes to talk about third-party cookies. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.